against uh, Ukraine. And over the last uh, weeks and months, we have seen fierce fighting in and around uh, Bakhmud. And uh, what we see is that uh, Russia is throwing in uh, more troops, uh, more forces. And uh, what uh, Russia lacks in uh, quality, they try to make up in quantity. Uh, they have suffered uh, big losses, but at the same time, uh, we can uh, not rule out that uh, uh, <coughs> Bakhmud uh, may eventually fall um, in the coming uh, days. And therefore, uh, it is also important to highlight that uh, this does uh, 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 not uh, necessarily uh, reflect any uh, turning point of the uh, war. Uh, and um, and, uh, and uh, uh, it just highlights that we should not underestimate uh, Russia. Uh, we must continue to provide support to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and um, NATO allies <coughs> have over the last year uh, supported Ukraine with uh, military and financial and economic support uh, worth um, around or close to 150 billion uh, euros, uh, out of which 65 uh, billion euros uh, is uh, military uh, support. Uh, it is in particular important to um, ramp up production of ammunition. Uh, this is an issue that NATO allies have addressed uh, for some time, uh, and we are now uh, going to agree new uh, guidelines, new requirements for stockpiles of ammunition, ensuring that we uh, both can replenish our own uh, stockpiles but also to continue uh, to provide uh, support to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and uh, um, NATO allies have signed contracts, and I welcome uh, that they have signed contracts with the defense industry to ramp up production, give them the long-term demand signals. And several NATO allies have also uh, 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 gone into joint projects or procurement of uh, uh, different types of ammunition, but also um, uh, 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 warehousing for uh, ammunition. Um, I uh, look forward to meet the uh, EU Defence Ministers to discuss these uh, issues and, and, and all the challenges we face together. And what we have seen throughout the war in Ukraine is how NATO and the European Union stand together, complement each other, and work together uh, to protect our values. Secretary General, there have been reports that uh, a pro-Ukrainian group attacked the Nord Stream pipelines last year. Um, can you confirm this and what knowledge does NATO have in this uh, respect? So what we do know uh, uh, is that uh, there was an attack against the Nord Stream pipelines, uh, an act of uh, sabotage. Uh, but we have not been able to uh, determine who was behind. Uh, there are ongoing national investigations, and I think it's uh, right to uh, wait until those are finalized before we say anything more about who uh, was uh, behind. Uh, what we also know is that, uh, is that uh, it demonstrates uh, the importance of uh, protecting our critical undersea infrastructure, because we have thousands of kilometers of uh, gas pipelines, of uh, uh, oil uh, uh, pipelines of uh, power grids uh, uh, and also, of course, all the internet cables. And all of this uh, infrastructure is critical for our uh, societies. Uh, NATO has addressed this for many years, but after the attacks uh, against the North Stream pipelines, uh, we have stepped up. Uh, we have established a cell at the NATO headquarters to coordinate efforts among uh, NATO allies, uh, to share more information, to work with the private sector that all, uh, often owns this uh, infrastructure and to uh, do more uh, to uh, uh, minimize the risk and uh, increase the protection of critical uh, undersea infrastructure. Coming back to ammunition, Mr. Mr. Stoltenberg, you yourself have repeatedly warned that uh, Ukraine is running out of ammunition. Are you satisfied with the pace of EU countries and NATO countries uh, in ramping up production capacities? This is now a war of attrition, uh, which is a battle of logistics. This is about, you know, getting the, the, the supplies, the ammunition, fuel to the front lines, to the soldiers. And this was clear all the uh, last fall. And that's the reason why NATO stepped up its efforts on uh, working with the industry and ramping up production. And also why we started the work of uh, 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 developing new requirements for uh, stockpiles as part of the NATO defense planning process, our capability targets. 
and allies, NATO allies, have already signed contracts which have uh, enabled uh, increased production. This is good, this is something I welcome, but there is an enormous demand out there. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the current rate of uh, consumption uh, compared to the current rate of uh, production of ammunition, of ammunition is not sustainable, and therefore we need to ramp up production. Uh, and I welcome um, that the European Union is stepping up, uh, NATO allies are stepping up, and we already have joint projects uh, among NATO allies uh, to provide both uh, more ammunition for artillery, more ammunition for air defense uh, systems, uh, and also uh, better infrastructure uh, warehousing for the ammunition. So this is something we have uh, we are working on. Uh, we have seen uh, important steps already been taken, but we need to do more because we need to ensure that uh, uh, Ukraine gets uh, the ammunition it needs uh, to defend itself against uh, Russia's uh, uh, war aggression, and we need to replenish our own stocks. Because so far, our support to uh, Ukraine has mainly come from depleting NATO stocks. Uh, and of course, in the long run, that's not sustainable. That's the reason why uh, we have already started the work on ramping up production. Last question. What do you expect from the new round of talks um, among Turkey, Finland and Sweden this Thursday? Will there be any breakthrough or will nothing happen until the election in Turkey? Thank you. First of all, we have to remember that uh, all NATO allies, also Turkey, made an historic decision uh, uh, at the NATO summit uh, last June, in, uh, in June last year when uh, they all agreed to invite Finland and Sweden to become uh, NATO allies. Uh, since then, uh, we have uh, integrated Finland and Sweden into NATO civilian and military structures, uh, and Sweden and Finland has a totally different status, uh, uh, being now more and more closely integrated into NATO, and several NATO allies have also provided uh, security assurances to Finland and, uh, and Sweden. NATO has increased its presence in this uh, region, um, and uh, altogether this means that it's inconceivable that there will be any military threat against Finland and Sweden without NATO uh, reacting. So Finland and Sweden are in a much safer, much better position now than before they applied. That's good for Finland and Sweden, but it's also good for uh, NATO. Uh, second, I uh, met with President Erdogan uh, f a couple of weeks ago. That was a good meeting. Uh, I was there to uh, express my condolences after the earthquake, but also to discuss how NATO could provide support to, uh, to Turkey after the earthquake. But we also discussed the way forward on membership. And we are making progress. Uh, uh, President Erdogan agreed to restart the talks uh, uh, in, and to have a meeting, uh, Finland, Sweden and Turkey. Um, at the NATO headquarters uh, tomorrow, um, and that in itself is an important thing uh, after a long period without any talks. Um, this is a process, and I don't expect the process to be concluded uh, tomorrow, but I'm confident that Finland and Sweden will become uh, NATO uh, allies. This is a top priority, and uh, we are uh, going to uh, continue to integrate Finland and Sweden into our alliance. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.